What Tantra really was, was a really ancient spiritual practice. And how, when did Tantra start? Well, some people say a thousand years ago, and that's one branch of Tantra. Some people say 5,000 years ago, deep in the uh, goddess culture time. There seems to be a lot of evidence in museums if you know how to look at it. Rebecca Chalker's, uh, who wrote The Clitoral Truth, is particularly good at giving uh, uh, erotic uh, museum tours at like the Met Museum. Rebecca Chalker is her name. Join one of those tours sometime. They're amazing. Anyway, 5,000 years ago, the whole practice of using sexual energy, of not having a separation between sexual energy and divine energy, uh, seemed apparently very, very normal, very natural and it was used as the powerful spiritual force it was. Um, and it was loud and it was messy and it was pretty chaotic and wild and that's the way we liked it then. And uh, by the time, Tantra kept wave, uh, uh, what we now know of as Tantra kept happening in waves. Uh, it, would, it would spring up and then some invading culture would stomp it down and then it would spring up and another invading culture would stomp it down. Finally, um, about somewhere between 800 and 1,000 years ago in India, um, it rose up again as a kind of a response to a bunch of other very ascetic, uh, pleasure-denying, body-denying practices that were going on around the time. Um, but it was not completely immune to asceticism. So there's a Tantra. The Tantra we kind of talk about today is such an amalgam of the wild, uh, ritualistic, sexual, and also the, the more disciplined yogic practice Tantra. And of course, as it moves toward China, and, and especially like around Bhutan, we have a Tantra that's really devoid of sex altogether. It, it evolved into yet a, 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 sexual pra a, a spiritual practice that really doesn't much deal with sex. But for a grand definition, we can think of Tantra as a spiritual practice that says that we are in these bodies for a reason, that they are no less divine than any other part of us. Nor is any other, nor is anything in the world less divine than it's as, as above, so below, basically. So we can use anything on this earth plane. If we go into it with mindfulness, with intention, with consciousness, we can hit, we can reach a divine place. We can find the divine in us. We can experience a kind of enlightenment, whatever your definition of, of, of spiritual realization might be. Can, you can find it washing the dishes if that becomes your meditation. You can find it walking. You can find it doing whatever kind of work you do. And you can also find it in sex. So why is it Tantra sex, Tantra sex, Tantra sex, Tantra sex? Well, because Tantra is about the only spiritual practice that says yay sex. So we gravitate toward it and go, Oh, it's all about sex because we need it to be all about sex in the West right now because there is so there are so few practices that say let's combine sex and spiritual energy and see what happens maybe this is a bona fide spiritual path so I think it's okay that we focus that we think that Tantra is all about sex if in fact it is healing for us, if in fact it's doing us all some good as individuals and as a culture. Historically, it may not be particularly accurate, but hey, <laughs> if it serves us and helps us and we do it with consciousness and integrity, I'm sure the ancient Indians don't mind. And as we go through the day, you might want to think about this midsummer notion because what does it mean? Lamas is first harvest. You might have something in your life that's just, just, just coming to fruition. Maybe something you planted a long, long time ago and it's just starting to show up in your life. You might, you might want to kind of acknowledge, wow, I made that happen. I grew that. Cool. I'm going to take a moment, have a little celebration of, I grew, by the way, a little personal note, I went to my garden, community garden yesterday. I picked, this tomato was so big, it made my bag almost too heavy to carry. I took it home. There were a few other tomatoes with it. I weighed it. It's 
19 and a half ounces, my tomato. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that tomato. I think it's a heck of a first harvest. Um, so what's the tomato in your life? You know, we all have one. Something that wasn't there a few months ago that's there now. That we can take a moment and dedicate some energy and appreciation to today. Similarly, what's not growing? What either needs to be pulled up so that something else can grow? Or um, what is doing well and you'd like more of it? So let's do a second planting so we can harvest it before, uh, before Halloween, which is the you know, complete end of the growing season. And lastly, it's a great time for festivals and community energy and celebration while we still have the light. This is when the time of, of summer when we become aware that the days are getting a little shorter. If you're in a summer community, I took a vacation in June, which I've, I've not really done in a very long time, to a summer place. Um, and I was aware that the energy in June is like, it's so hopeful. It's like, I was in Provincetown, so it was a sexy place too. So it was like, hey, this whole summer's in front of us. I don't have to worry about getting laid. The whole summer's in front of me, you know? Uh, people who were performance artists were like, you know, hey, the whole summer's in front of us to have wonderful shows. By this time, you can start to feel the tension. <laughs> if you're in one of those communities, it's like, hey, I haven't gotten laid enough yet. Whoa, uh, you know, uh, that show, it's, it, the new one I was writing, it's still not done. Uh, hey, I promised myself I'd fill in the blank this summer, and oh my God, the summer's almost gone. <laughs> this is not helped by the back-to-school sales that started in July. <laughs> so this is a nice day to come to center and go, it's the middle of the summer. This is a yummy thing. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate the fact that we are in healthy, ecstatic, prone bodies. So that's my little llama speech. It's so, it's so funny and so wonderful. I keep getting invited back to the Open Center on uh, pagan holidays, uh, which is so perfect for me. So I've got to thank Ralph White for that. <laughs> Um, okay, so what's Tantra here today? Oh, 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 let me tell you a little. This happens. You'll notice this happening. I have two thoughts. People speak in my mind. <laughs> if that doesn't worry you, it should, but it's okay. And it goes like this. And they have a fight in the middle of my brain, and I have to wait until they sort it out, and then I speak whichever one I'm one. Um, so what's Tantra here today? For me what Tantra is, is the practice of going into everything totally and mindfully. Really just that simple. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that.